Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the access of trader.com uh, nightly uh, wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, kindly, if you like what we're doing, if you like the content, uh, if you like the day to day uh, unbiased opinion, all I ask is again, guys, just take a second, uh, like the video. That's it. That's all I ask. Uh, share, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And again, I'll hopefully uh, continue to give you an unbiased opinion of what I think is going to happen uh, the next day. So, Let's talk about the day. I mean, where the hell do I begin? Um, look, when you start trading, okay, when you start trading, you are going to face, and you don't realize this because you've never traded before, um, but when you are a brand new trader, you don't realize the longer you trade in this business, okay, you're, you're probably going to be put in every single type of scenario. You're going to have a massive drawdown eventually, okay? You are going to have a massive run that you feel that nothing you can do could be wrong. You're walking on water and you could buy stocks at any level. You could do this, you can do that, and everything will be okay, okay? Uh, you will go through uh, an incredible distribution cycle or what social media calls the chop, right? The chop, that's all part of the game. And... The one piece of information that nobody tells you until you actually experience it is that one aspect of your trading career, and again, the longer you trade, eventually you'll be exposed to everything, is that holy shit, did anybody get the, the number to the license plate of the truck that just ran everybody over? That's it, right? That's the curveball, right? That's literally the curveball that every trader, no matter how prepared you are, no matter how uh, long you've been trading 20 minutes to 20 years, you eventually will be put in that situation. And when you are put in a situation that you are not really, I don't want to use the word prepared, but not kind of used to because it's not a normal thing, you are going to have uh, a, a tendency of the human side, the human element of your trading to come out. You are going to get a little frazzled. You are going to get uh, a little bit, uh, you know, kind of taken back of what you're seeing because it's not normal. It's like being in the batter's box, right? It's like being in the batter's box of batting practice. The pitching coach is throwing you fastball after fastball after fastball right down the middle. And then all of a sudden he just throws one at your head, right? You're not expecting it. So you're not obviously going to be looking out for it. And that's exactly what kind of happened today. Uh, this was one of those days that if you trade high beta technology names. Okay. And that's kind of what I do, right? I, I, I trade uh, high beta technology names. Um, I was ready for the day, right? I was absolutely ready for the day. I I am always prepared on both sides. I always uh, take down levels. I know where a stock is going to be uh, going, should be going higher. I know where a stock should be going lower and I set alerts. That's all I do. If you get like, I use e-signal for, for my charting and I have a lot of alerts set. So what I do is I'll set alerts to the upside. I'll set alerts to the downside. So if the market turns in one way and I'm not, you know, looking at that way, I'll be prepared on, you know, I'll be prepared. But this is where we play the game, right? This is where we play the game. So if you guys remember, and let me kind of get, kind of really get you, kind of show you what my day was. So if you guys remember, one of my favorite setups going into yesterday was Google, right? Was Google. Uh, Google... Uh, that was the first close over the 50-day moving average. We talked about the setup uh, last night. And I said, hey, if Google confirms, right, if Google confirms, I think we get a push to 69.70, right? If you could just, all, go, all, you have to do, all you have to do is go back to last night's video. So I wake up this morning and Google gets upgraded. And I was like, oh, are you kidding me? Really gets upgraded. And you look and the stock is trading like 68 and change. I was like, oh, this thing's already up almost $3. I was like, I really don't want to, you know, I really don't want to to chase this thing. I don't want anybody's word chase, but I really don't want to buy this thing into strength because it's Google. It's not like you're buying Tesla up three and it could go up 15. It's Google, right? It's Google. It's not, every single stock is a little bit different. So, you know, here's kind of, kind of the reference where I, I was talking about. It. So here it is, right? So Google is an aggressive setup, right? Now we're not talking about the one... 66.16 level that I was looking to to buy it today. We're looking at the gap up. Now it needs to get above 68.80, needs to confirm the pre-market highs. But here is kind of the 
the curveball, right? Here's kind of the curveball to myself. I go, I would really prefer the dip into the rising 60 minute support of six uh, of 166.80s. I should have stepped in my guns, right? When you, when you are a trader, I don't care how long you are, how how long you've been trading, always stick to your guns, guys. And again, the word FOMO is thrown around a lot. It really is. But unless unless you really understand what chasing versus feeling comfortable in entry, you really don't appreciate uh, what you need to do to wait for stocks to come into your levels. Whatever. It is what it is. I made a choice. So I get long off the opening range highs. No big deal. Here was the problem, right? As soon as I got long, I'm not talking about within five, 10 seconds. As soon as I got long, uh, news breaks that Iran is basically hitting Israel with 200 missiles. As you can imagine, right? As you can imagine, the market didn't like that. And Google, just like everything else, I'm just using Google because I was in the stock, right? Google starts to go lower. The problem is the first bounce was exactly where I wanted to bounce it in the first place. But I didn't hear the news. For some reason, I was so dialed in, I didn't hear the news. So I buy the stock, it goes down a dollar. The problem was initially I was going to use a dollar as my stop, but I go, well, wait a minute, there's rising support there. So let me just you know, let me just buy more into that rising support. I usually will never do that. But I was like, you know what? I like that area anyway. And keep this in mind. I still don't know. I'm so tuned in. And when I'm trading, I'm so locked in. I still don't hear the news. I still don't understand what's going on. So I buy more into rising support. It bounces like 15, 20 cents, right? And then I realize what the news is. The futures start tanking, right? Absolutely tanking. I wound up losing like a dollar and change, but I had some, you know, decent load on. No diddy, right? So I wound up getting, you know, pretty hit, you know, pretty decently hit at the open. I go, all right, whatever, not a big deal. So I go, you know what? This news comes out. Let me let me find some setups to the Dallas on, right? So I'm I'm sitting there and I'm watching SMCI and I go, well, SMCI, we already know all the news on this thing. Everything is, you know, everything looks crappy. Buyers start coming in for the weekly 40s, 39s, 38s, 37.75s of all strikes. So I was like, all right, let me short it through yesterday's lows. If the market's imploding, this thing should get in. Who else buying this thing? So I short this thing, and there's a real old buyer in the crowd. I'm like, are you effing kidding me? Now, there's a real old buyer in the crowd, and now the market is tanking. So I'm on the right side of the market, but there's a real old buyer in the stock. So what happens? They squeeze me back up for a dollar. So I'm like, wait a minute. I just got hit on Google. I got hit with a reload buyer of SMCI. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? So I take a step back and I go, you know, let me just relax, right? Let me just relax, kind of just take it all in. I want to make sure that I'm looking at the tape the right way. Uh, again, when you're a brand new trader, you get really razzled and fazzled and all those weird words and you start revenge trading, starting looking at everything in sight. So I was like, you know what? I'm obviously not good here at the open, uh, I took a little bit of a hickey, more than a little bit of a hickey. Let me just try to see if there's value, right? If there's value left, or is this just kind of one of these headlines that I just got hit on uh, and I'm okay with that? It's going to suck, but I'm going to be okay with that. And then slowly but surely, you started seeing the market come in more and you start to see more news, more news. You see oil starting to spike. I think at the highs, oil was up about 5%. Anytime there's tension in the Middle East, oil is going to spike. So you had oil spiking and everything is starting to come in. And then I, I started looking at my, you know, at our pivots, right? I started looking at our pivots and I go, all right, you know, let's see, let me, let me see where I can make some money on. Um, well, at least make some m- money back on, right? That's the most important part. So you guys remember we talked about Avago. I, talk, I talked about it just like um, Amazon, right? Amazon yesterday on the 10 day breakdown. So I short Avago, right? I short Avago. And guess what? Another reload buyer is sitting there in the crowd. You can't make this stuff up. Another buyer is sitting there in the crowd. I'm like, are you kidding me? So now I have two shorts back to back as the market's coming in with buyers on the bottom of the channel. Like, what the hell is going on here? So now I'm like, you know, I'm getting like I'm a human being. I start, you know, getting a little bit of a little bit of hot, a little bit of sweaty. I'm like, this is just incredible. I go, listen, if I lose money on this trade, I'm done for the day. This is like 15 minutes into the day, man. And all this stuff is going on. And eventually the guy leaves, right? Eventually the guy leaves. They flush it down. I take some off, right? I take some off. 
Uh, I get break even on the balance and I'm like, ah, oh, crap, this is like, this is the day from hell. I go, okay, I'm definitely going to chill until I see something really, really good. Or if not, I'm okay. You know, I took a nice little, you know, nice little nut. I keep on saying that. No diddy, right? And most important thing is let me just clear my head. Let me get out alive. And then slowly but surely, the, the market gods decided to give me the one stock that could save the day. The one stock, right? Everybody loves this and loves that. Everybody knows when I trade. And I go, oh my God. You guys remember yesterday we were talking about what happens if Tesla loses the five day? You guys remember that? What happens if Tesla loses the five day? Well, I'll tell you what happened if Tesla loses the five day. Tesla saved the day, right? Tesla saved the day. By the way, uh, I don't think anybody got uh, meta at the open. It went from 577 to 581. I know I didn't. But this was the trade. This was the trade that kind of made the world right again, made the air fresh again, made the food taste good again, and really, really saved my day. So I went from a really horrible open to like, what the hell is going on? And then you started seeing these 250 puts coming in, 250, 250, 250. We already knew from two days ago. You guys remember we kept on talking about the five day, the five day. I kept on referencing, you know, many, many examples, Microsoft, Amazon. What happens if stocks lose the five day? Well, the market gods blessed us after the, the, the horrific start to the day. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a human being. I bleed like everybody else. I don't care. I'm trading probably longer than a lot of people you know. Things are going to sometimes not work out the way you want, especially at the open. But when you get a macro headline of potential war and you don't hear it because you're so dialed in, things become really, you start, they start to unravel very, very quickly. I'm just happy this is 2024, not 2004 when I was four or five years into this business versus 25 years into this business. Because again, everything started slowing down. I took a deep breath. And once Tesla lost that 254 level, this really saved the day. I mean, really, really saved the day. Here was Tesla and thank God. I mean, thank God it lost this whole channel here. Uh, we got short off that 254 level. Uh, my lowest cover was in the 250s and knock on wood, it saved the day. But it really did show, it really did show the mortality of how quickly things can escalate, how quickly uh, things can transpire, even the most experienced trainers. So if you're a brand new trainer and you see stuff like this going on, this is like the earth crumbling around you. And this is, you know, usually when you have a, a day like this, most people won't recover because most people will try to try to trade C, D, E, F level setups to try to get their money back or even worse, chase performance because they're so afraid that they're missing the move that they, you know, they go from a pretty, and again, I don't want to even call this a paper cut. They had a pretty decent hickey here at the open, uh, but they go from a decent hickey to, you know, like damaging their account. And this is where, you know, we talk about how everybody loves a bull market. Everybody loves even a bear market when things are trending down. But when you have a macro geopolitical event, such as a potential war breaking out and you don't hear it and things start crumbling around you, this is where experience comes in. This is where you take a deep breath and go, let me take a deep breath. Let me take a step back and just wait for something good. If the day would have ended before the Tesla uh, pivot, I would have been disappointed, obviously. Again, who the hell wants to take a hickey? Uh, but the key is you wait for your setups. They don't have to necessarily come today. If they do come today, that's great. But the point is you never re revenge trade. You never put yourself in a position that you keep on digging and digging. You're digging ultimate, your ultimate demise. You just wait for that premium setup come. And one of the things we always talk about in the webinar is you might not get it today, but eventually you'll get it. Fortunately for us, we waited. We, we knew about that 254 level. We took out the 254 level and traded right into the 10-day into the moving average, which is absolutely a, a savior of the day. And things worked out well. Uh, in the process, it probably took about 10, 15 years uh, off of my life. And that first hour of the day, man, I, I tell you, I was exhausted, absolutely exhausted. Um, we dodged a pretty healthy bullet. But the most important part was it really shows you how quick things change, how quickly the bull, bullish sentiment gets bearish and how the bearish sentiment gets bullish. You get one headline, you have one uh, you know, one piece of news that comes out that completely derails your whole day 
puts you in a very, very uncomfortable situation, make you put on um, putting on, on incredibly uh, artificial trades that you would never take. And that's the key to kind of take a deep breath, take a stand, calm down, and usually good things are going to happen because your emotional levels will start moving, uh, getting back to normal. That's exactly uh, what happened today. Uh, other than that, right? Other than that, uh, crazy day in the tape. Uh, market today, again, when we talked about a couple of days ago, Q's lost the five, Q's lost the 10, Q's got to the 20 day moving average. Uh, this is obviously going to be the line in the sand uh, going forward in the next few days. This uh, 477.40s, just in case there is uh, more selling. Uh, there's a lot of names today that hit their major support, guys. Guys, watch Microsoft in case we have another day of selling, right? You see how Microsoft reclaimed the 50 day moving average and started ripping? Well, what happens if Microsoft loses the 50-day moving average tomorrow? Keep an eye on that. Uh, also watch NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA is the same thing. NVIDIA today stopped right at the 50-day moving average. Watch this thing for tomorrow. Now, what happens if the NVIDIA loses the 50-day moving average? Again, keep an eye on that. Uh, look at AMD, right? Look at AMD. AMD today uh, touched the 10-day moving average, bounced. Now, what happens if it loses the 10-day moving average tomorrow? Again, we want to be prepared. We absolutely want to be prepared on both sides of the market. Um, as of right now, uh, as of right now, I didn't hear any crazy headlines after the close. The last thing I heard was uh, the defense minister for Israel telling um, citizens they could come out of their bunkers or shelters, whatever the case may be. But you don't know what's going to transpire overnight. You don't definitely don't know what's going to happen tomorrow at the open. And the key is to be flexible. The key is to be ready on both sides and make sure that you are thinking clearly. You're thinking logically. There is no emotional stress. There is no emotional uh, levels that you're trying to um, you're trying to to fight. The most important part is be a professional. I know it gets hard sometimes. I know sometimes there's literally you know you know maybe it's a bad way of saying it. And missiles you know pointed at you, but that's our job, guys. That's our job to get rid of uh, all the unnecessary noise and try to make clear and uh, concise decisions, especially when it comes to your financing. So yeah, crazy day, guys. God bless everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get a nice, boring, lethargic, predictable day instead of the chaos that we saw today. God bless you folks. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.